You know, this is something. Let me get this off so I won't blow you out of here when I do start. Taking that off makes it sound. I don't sound like Darth Vader anymore. And uh, I want to tell you something. One of the problems we have in our church is we don't share real stuff. One of the problems I've seen in my ministry is that people only show, share churchy stuff because they're afraid that somebody's going to think something bad about them. I've been praying about this service for about almost two weeks now. We went to those meetings on Monday and Tuesday, and God made it very, very alive to me. In a la- and you know I've been preaching 50 years, but in the last 25 or 30 years, as I got old enough to pay attention, that I have seen, now listen to this, in almost every church that I have pastored, I have known people that have had abortions. I've known, of course, ladies. I've known ladies that have given up children, just as was kind of talked about here a second ago. I know people that have been drug addicts. I know people that have had affair after affair after affair. I've dealt with other churches and a couple of times in churches I've been in, pastors that have had problems with pornography and could not break it. I've dealt with pastors, with other pastors, that we had a pastor in in our area that was after almost 30 women and having affairs. I have had young pastors in other churches and one way back when, whenever even on the church computers were watching pornography and signing up for all kinds of stuff. I've been to a church and I've known at least a handful or so of people that have pastors now that have they've always been I guess but became homosexual and left their family and wives the reason I'm saying that is is because we got to quit putting our head in the sand and acting like everything's okay because it should be okay don't get me wrong what well, we said here, God is always going to take care of it. But we need not be ashamed. Because God, if he's brought us through it, we can help somebody else get through it. You see, and I might have trouble with this one. I've shared it with one small group. In the last two or three years, I've shared it with a, a few people. But here I was raising a Christian home. I was... Saved at seven, I dedicated my life in the ministry at 14, started preaching at 15. But at the age of seven, for about four or five years or so, I don't even know how long anymore, until I got old enough to fight back, I was sexually molested by guys that were older than me. A couple of those were men. For a long time, I had a problem with my thinking about biblical sex. I know we don't talk about sex in church. Well, maybe we should have. Because maybe I'd have went forward and told somebody, but I knew it was a subject that shouldn't have been talked about because that's what I was taught. All but one of those I believe today is dead. Talking about sharing, a couple of you talk about sharing this on live online and on TV next Sunday night, you know, so what? I want to tell you it was by the grace of God. And I had a warped mind when it came to these things for many years, and it was only God that could take me through it. There's nothing else good. And I don't want you to feel sorry for me. Let me tell you something. I bet you if the truth would be known, a third or more of the people in here have had the same type of experiences. But I want to tell you this. God is not only able, but God will deliver us from anything that's ever happened in our lives. I was going to, 
one of the reasons I wanted to do this testimony before because if it kept on going, I wanted to make sure it was able to. And, and then maybe I wouldn't have to preach and say this. Um, and so, but I'm going to just start out with the first part of Galatians. We're not going to cover it all today. I am going to have the praise team come back at the end. I'm just going to preach for just a few minutes here. But uh, in Galatians 5.16 is where we're going to start. I believe we're all responsible for our own actions to give them to God or not. I'm not, I'm not talking about, listen, I wasn't responsible for what people did to me. But I was responsible to God to thank God and give God the glory no matter that it happened in my life so that God would take care of it in my life that I could hand it to him and not take it back. And you see, that's where we all stand. With whatever's going on in your life, whatever's happened in your life, whatever has messed up your mind, messed up your train of thought, talking about alcoholism. Let me tell you something. I've dealt with dozens and dozens with alcoholism. I've dealt with dozens and dozens of people that have sexual problems. I've dealt with dozens and dozens of people in my ministry that have been drug addicts. I've dealt with about everything that you can imagine. And I want to tell you the same answer is Jesus Christ. In Galatians it says in chapter 5, verse 16, So I say, let the Holy Spirit guide your lives. Here's the problem with churches. We let other people guide our lives and not the Spirit of God. We don't want to say anything because nobody else has said anything or, nobody, or somebody else told us not to say anything. And the problem we have is that you and I need to answer to the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit alone. Let the Holy Spirit guide your lives. Then you won't be doing what your sinful nature craves. Do I think it's easy? A lot of people look at me and say, well, you're a preacher, you know. You don't have these problems. Oh, baloney. I got the same problems everybody else has. I got the same things I went through in my life that everybody else does. Maybe I just know how to look up how, what the answer is a little faster. And maybe I've learned over time to go and allow the Holy Spirit of God to move in my life a little quicker. But he says, you won't be craving that sinful nature if you allow the Holy Spirit to lead you. He goes on here and gets serious. In verse 17, it says the sinful nature wants you to do evil, which is just the opposite of what the Spirit wants. And the Spirit gives us desires that are opposite of what the sinful nature desires. Isn't that the truth? Isn't that the way it is in all of our lives? Paul in one place in Romans said, I do what I do, I do what I don't want to do, and I don't do what I should do, and I hit it's a doo-doo verses in the Bible. You know, we're all kind of all like that in things in our life. Homer, there's things that we haven't let go of. There's things that we hold on to. There's things that we keep going back to. There's sometimes it's even self-pity that we keep wallowing in that pool of self-pity that you and I have created and allowed to continue because we haven't given it over to God. You see, as we go on here, it says, and the Spirit gives us desires, as I already read, that are the opposite of what the sinful nature desires. These two forces, listen to this, are constantly fighting each other. So you are not free to carry out your good intentions. There's a war going on. Ephesians tells us about it. It's a spiritual war. There's a warfare going on. It's always going on. It never stops. There's always things that come and face you that you don't want to get involved in, you don't want to do, but somehow you're drawn to it. I want to give you this, that the Holy Spirit's the only thing that will keep us from that. And going back to the Holy Spirit of God, going back to the Word of God, allowing the Word of God to continue to change our hearts and lives, that is the only answer that you and I have. We go on. In verse 18 it says, But when you are directed by the Spirit, you are not under listen to this, obligation to the law of Moses. Now, this is simplified that a little bit. You and I are not obli under obligation to the sinful nature. We're dead to that. We died to those trespasses and sins as a 
King James says, we died to all the old things we used to do, and now we should become alive in Jesus. Let's go on. When you follow the desires of your sinful nature, the results are very clear. Listen to this list. See if it doesn't apply. Think about your own life for a minute. I want to ask you to definitely think about the things that you haven't let go of. The results are very clear. Sexual immorality. Impurity. Lustful pleasures. We go on. Idolatry. Serving everything but Almighty God. Sorcery. Hostility. Can you believe that? You know why a lot of churches fight all the time? It's because they're out of the will of God. Quarreling. Jealousy. I want to tell you, I'm not going to be jealous of someone else. God created me to be who I am in Him. And all I have to do is answer to Him. Outburst of anger. You see this list? Selfish ambition. Dissensions, divisions. Envy. Drunkenness. Wild parties. And most of us get right there and we go, well, I'm not doing any wild parties, so I guess I'm all right. Listen, you idiot. Excuse me. <laughs> you just missed everything else that has been said here. I know that's how it works because that's the way I work. I look at that and I say, oh, I'm not involved in that, so I guess I'm okay. No, dummy, you just went over 20 things you're not okay in. Listen, they all apply. Every bit of them apply. And if you and I want to be who God created us to be in Him, then you and I got to pay attention and listen to the Word of God and apply the Holy Spirit in our life. He goes... And under sins like these, let me tell you again, as I have before, that everyone living that sort of life will not inherit the kingdom of God. Now listen, all of us as Christians mess up. There's not a one of us in here that are perfect. We all mess up. We all do things we shouldn't do. We've all done things we shouldn't do. This is talking about continuing to live a lifestyle that is this lifestyle. And not allowing the Holy Spirit to get a hold of our lives and change us because God's Word says His children, His sheep hear His voice. He tells us He was chasing us as children. And so if we have not allowed God to get control in those areas of our life, we may not know God and if we do not know God, we continue in these things, we continue in these things, you cannot be in heaven with him. So we go on. And most of you know these, but the Holy Spirit produces a kind of fruit in our lives, this kind of fruit in our lives. Listen to this. Is this what people see when they see you and I? I'm not talking about just on Sunday morning in church. I'm talking when they see you late at night i'm talking about when they see you out at other places i'm talking about when they see you when they've interrupted you i'm talking about when they see you no matter where you're at 24 7. do they see these love joy peace patience kindness goodness faithfulness and guess what it doesn't stop there gentleness, and self-control. There is no law against these things. Some of us are letting Satan beat us down because of our past. Just a couple of weeks ago, I preached about Paul said, I forget about the past, and I press on to the mark. And I'll, give you, I'll tell you the truth. The only way you can forget about the past is finally give it over to God. And leave it at Jesus' feet. I'm going to ask Corey to come, and we're going to have a time of invitation. 
And then I'm going to still add the praise team. I know we're going a little late, and some of you are going to. Listen, there's not that many people in the restaurants, and not that many people going to the restaurants. Get over it. It'll be okay. I'm going to ask him just to play. If you need to come, I'd ask you just to come and kneel down here and pray. Do you need, you do need my Jesus if you don't have him. Would you come and receive him? Today I'm going to ask you that. I usually don't ask everybody to do this, but I'm going to ask everybody to stand. We're going to pray. Are you going to have the whole praise team come here in a second, Corey? Because we are going to let you go ahead. I'm going to ask you to come down and pray. Praise team wants to come up here. Go ahead. I'm going to ask everybody to bow your heads. Close your eyes because it's none of your business except between you and God. You don't have to say what's happened in your life because God knows it already. But if there's some things that you've had trouble giving over to God, would you just raise your hand? Nobody else looking around. Just raise your hand. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Thank you. All over the building. Thank you. I'm going to ask that God would help you just hand all those over to him and take them right now. And then are there some of us here that, and this is a hard one, so everybody keep your heads bowed and your eyes closed. There's some here that said, you know, I'm just playing church. Oh, I come, I know everything to do, everything to say, and how to look, and how not to look. But I just need something new and fresh in my life. I need a hunger and thirst for righteousness. Would you just raise your hand? Thank you. Thank you. All right, thank you. I'm going to pray, and I'm going to ask you just to continue to come as God leads you to come. Heavenly Father, we need you more than anything else. Father, we need your spirit to move and be alive in us. Father, there's homes here that need to be healed, and only you alone can do that. Father, there's lives here that are out of control with the things of this world, and only you, Lord, can take care of that. Oh, there's a battle going on. Father, show us in our lives that you are always victorious, and Satan's always a loser. And Father, you will deliver us if we come to you earnestly and ask you to, but then we've got to quit going back to that same trough to eat out of and go to the things that you have for us that your Holy Spirit leads us to do. Father, I pray today that you would touch this church in a mighty way. Help us, Father, to become real and to love each other and to understand there's none of us that are better than anybody else. We are all children of yours saved by grace. Father, I pray for this time right now. Pray that you'd use it in a mighty way. And these things we ask in Jesus' precious and holy name. Amen. I'm going to ask you just to come forward as they're still going to sing today as the praise team sings. If you want to just come forward and pray, come forward to pray. If you need to rededicate that life, rededicate that life. Whatever you need to do, ask God to take care of you. Come as we sing today.